Irma, honey. Yes, Jane? This magazine says that scientists in Arizona have just found the footprints of a prehistoric animal two million years old. What do you think of that? Well, I think they're silly if they try to track it down. I'm sure it's dead. <laughs> well, that's what you can expect when you listen to my friend, Irma. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship When other friendships have been forgot Theirs will still be hot Lever Brothers Company, makers of Swan, the soap with the exclusive super-creamed blend, presents... Our friend Swan. With my friend Irma. Starring Marie Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. Tonight is a very important night for me. I'm anxious to be bright and gay, and I want to look my best. The reason? I met a new fellow. I really kind of like him. So I decided to discuss it with my roommate, Irma. Irma? Yes, Jane? I know this may shock you, honey, but I have a date tonight, and it's not with Richard. Not with Richard? Oh, Jane, you're going to get a reputation for being footloose. Of course, if you want to go around with loose feet. <laughs> oh, Irma, stop being a Puritan. This is 1948. How long can a girl wait for a man? I'm getting older. So what? You know what they say, Jane. Wine improves with age. I know. If you wait long enough, it can turn into vinegar. <laughs> Personally, I think Rich is just wonderful, but he doesn't seem to be getting any more serious. The sound of those wedding bells seems to be growing fainter. Well, that's one problem I haven't got, Jane. I hear bells in my head all the time. <laughs> but, Jane, uh, who's your new fellow? Oh, his name's Peter Guilford. Irma, he's nothing short of sensational. Oh, just like my Al, he's a sensational nothing, too. <laughs> you can say that again, but I wish you wouldn't because the subject bores me. Oh, Jane, what does your new fellow Peter Guilford do? Well, I don't know too much about him, honey, because I just met him. But I know he has an important job with the government. He, uh, he mentioned something about being in charge of financial distribution. Well, Jane, even though you met another fella, I still think you love Richard. Now, tell me the truth. Well, I don't really know, sweetie. Sometimes I'm not sure that I was ever truly in love with Richard. Well, that's where Al and I are different. We know we're in love. Otherwise, why would I get all confused and dizzy? <laughs> Well, honey, the answer to a question like that has many ramifications. Anyway, I just can't wait until my date tonight with Peter Guilford. You know, I'm really excited about him. Come in. It's only me, Professor Kropotkin. <laughs> Hello, Janie and Irma, my two little crystal gazers. One with all the answers, the other still in a trance. <laughs> Excuse me for intruding, girls. I just came down to tell you the good news. I made up with Mrs. O'Reilly. Oh, wonderful, Professor. That's what we like to hear. How long could I stay mad at a woman who has such a wonderful heart? Imagine last night she baked me a seven-layer cake. Just what I needed. Oh, that's nice. It will make a perfect footrest. Well, I I am... Oh, gee, this is a day for romance. You and Miss O'Reilly, and, and Jane has a new boyfriend. Janie, is that right? What happened with Richard? Nothing. It's just that Richard's been stalling, and I've decided not to put all my eggs in one basket. Oh, you're smart, Jane. When they cost almost a dollar a dozen, you have to be careful. <laughs> Being careful is what I want to talk to you about, Janie. A person in choosing a mate must never be too particular. You know, I remember when I started courting girls. One I didn't like because she was mean, another was jealous, another was stingy, another was naggy. So gradually I became an expert, and I wound up marrying a woman who was a combination of all of them. Well, Irma's jumping to conclusions, Professor. I'm not marrying Peter Guilford. I'm merely having dinner with him. But it's something to keep in mind, Janie. Why do you think I've gotten romantical thoughts about Mrs. O'Reilly? I'll tell you. All my life, women I've known have run around with other fellows. 
but Mrs. O'Reilly. Her I could leave on an island with a boatload of shipwrecked sailors, and she wouldn't get kissed if a mistletoe tree fell on her. <laughs> and that's what a man likes, peace of mind. Oh, Professor, uh, do you know that Jane's new boyfriend, Peter Guilford, has a very important job with the government? Oh, really, Jane? What, what does he do? Well, he, he told me he was in charge of financial distribution. Oh, that already is a big job. Hmm. And, Janie, I hope it works out well for you. Thank you. Well, girls, I got to go now. Since I'm taking Mrs. O'Reilly out, I think I'll run down to the corner and buy her a corsage. A bunch of celery. <laughs> oh, Professor, you can't smell celery. I got news for you. You can't eat daisies, either. <laughs> Goodbye. Hello? Hiya, chicken. Hello, Al, honey. Where are you? In a telephone booth down at the unemployment office. Gonna be a little late, chicken. The guy who gives out the check seems to be all thumbs today. Well, he should make you wait after all. You're one of their best customers. <laughs> yeah, I know. Would make a complaint, but don't want him to think I'm trying to take his job away from him. Why not? He might give it to me. <laughs> hey, hold it, chicken. The line's starting to move. We'll see you soon. Goodbye, Al. Bye, chicken. Oh, made it. Boy, this gripes me. Still have to stand in line. You'd think a guy who's been coming here this long would have seniority. Uh, it's the fault of the guy who distributes the checks, that Peter Guilford. There's a real bum for you. Boy, I hate him. Oh, hiya, Pete. <laughs> How's tricks? Oh, it's you, Al. Did you look for a job this week? Uh, uh, no, I couldn't. You, you see, um, my grandmother died. She died last week. <laughs> she rallied. <laughs> I knew you'd have an answer. You always do. Here's your check. Ah, uh, thanks, Pete. See you next week, kid. That Peter Guilford. I hate that bum. Irma, honey, will you hand me my nail polish? I want to look my best for Peter Guilford tonight. All right, Jane. Come in. Oh, hello, Mrs. O'Reilly. Oh, my, you're all dressed up. Oh, thank you, dear. The professor and I are going out tonight. And I was wondering if you could lend me a pair of dark glasses. Dark glasses? Yes, the wind blew me eyelashes off the windowsill. <laughs> I, I wouldn't want him to see me without them. You know the way he kids about me false teeth and me artificial fingernails and me bleach transformation. He says if we ever cross the border, the customs man will be checking my parts Five days after we've gone. <laughs> oh, he's a great kidder. It's me again, girls, and Mrs. O'Reilly. Oh, what a beautiful day it is. I was just out taking a walk. Oh, Professor, don't move. There are two caterpillars on your shoulder. Caterpillars? Glory be, those are me eyelashes. <laughs> I should have known. You know, Mrs. O'Reilly, if this building ever caught fire and you jumped out of the window, the fireman wouldn't know which part to catch first. <laughs> oh, hush, Professor. Tell me, Janie, darling, how's Richard? I see you're wearing a new dress. Going somewhere special with him? Well, before Irma gets a chance to distort the news, I'll tell it to you. I'm dating a new beau tonight. Oh. Yes, and he's a very important man who works for the government. Well, you know what's best for you, Janie. I only hope it'll bring you happiness. After all, the most important thing in life is love. Now, take me. All right. I'll admit I'm not a spring chicken. I'm 39. <laughs> but I'm going out with the professor tonight. Mrs. O'Reilly, you are 39. Then let me ask you a question. Why is it the moment the music starts, you automatically go into a minuet? <laughs> That's the reason I love to go out with you, Professor. I like to go out with you, too. But to help me, I can't think of a reason. <laughs> well, goodbye, girls. We'll be running along now. <laughs> goodbye. And, Janie, have a good time tonight with your new boyfriend. Thanks, Professor. Irma, you know, I want to make a good impression tonight, so I think I'll buy a new hat. I won't be long. If Richard calls, remember, you don't know where I am. All right, Jane. Come in. Hello, Jane. Hiya, chicken. Hi, Al. Hello, Al, honey. Oh, the humiliation of that unemployment office. 
I won't have to put up with that stuff much longer. Got a deal that'll put me on easy street. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're gonna glue corn silk on old sweaters and sell them for fur jackets. <laughs> no, that's not the deal, but like yours better. <laughs> Sorry, Al, I've already patented it with the insane asylum. Well, I'll be back as soon as I find a hat, honey. Goodbye, all. Hmm. Disparaging day. Never gonna amount to nothing. Don't say that about Jane, Al. She has a date for dinner tonight with a new boyfriend. Oh? She gave Richard the old heave-ho? Well, Richard has been stalling. You know, a girl gets impatient waiting for a man to accept her proposal. <laughs> Chicken, you ain't hinting about you and I. No, Al, but now that you mention it, I think it's about time we get married. I want to have children while I'm young, while I still know what more than they do. <laughs> <laughs> Chicken, you can't get married on a shoestring. Besides, I want you to have a nice home, beautiful furniture, a maid, and, and a car of your own. Oh, Al, a car of my own? Well, certainly. You think after we're married, I'm going to let you walk to work? <laughs> oh, but, Al, I get so tired of waiting for that day. Oh, now, Chicken, you've got to be patient till one of my deals comes through. Oh, Al, if you could only get a good job like Jane's new boyfriend has, we could get married right away. Yeah, what does this guy do? Oh, he's with the government in charge of financial distribution. Financial distribution. Sounds important. Chicken, me meeting a guy like that might change our whole future. How? I'm working on a plan. Know all our dreams will come true. Oh, Al, I have so much confidence in you. Now, let me give you a big kiss for luck. Okay, Chicken. Hey, Chicken, what's the idea of making those cross eyes when I kissed you? Well, I wanted to see on which side of my nose your nose goes when you kiss me. <laughs> which side? Neither. <laughs> we meet bumper to bumper. <laughs> Say, ladies, here's a way you can prove to yourself that swan soap actually differs from other soaps. Feel a cake of swan. It feels smoother. As Susie Swan says, it's a smoothie. It's a smoothie. It's a cake of swan. You can feel that super creamed blend. You can feel the difference in it. You can tell it in a minute. It's a smoothie. That's swan. Yes, ladies, the way Swan feels is a direct result of Swan's super creamed blend. So next time when you unwrap a cake of Swan, make this little test. Run your fingertips over the surface of the cake. Feel the smoothness. See how Swan's super creamed blend makes Swan differ from other soaps. Then, when you use Swan for dishes, feel Swan's suds. They feel richer, creamier. And Swan's mild suds protect your hands. Sure, when you're through, look at your hands. You'll see they're left with a smooth, soft, young look. What's more, Swan Super Cream Suds are thick, fast suds, too, and they rinse away so completely your dishes don't need wiping. It's true, Swan Soap means faster dishwashing and protection for your hands, thanks to Swan's exclusive Super Creamed Blend. <laughs> shopping for a hat. I've tried off the face hats, on the face hats, low brims, high brims, no brims, no hat, just brim. <laughs> However, I saw one that I thought was adorable. Three roses sewed on a ribbon. $95. <laughs> I wouldn't spend that much for three roses if I just finished a quarter four roses. <laughs> I decided to just forget the hat. Let my personality work for me tonight. Hello, honey. Hi, Jane. Did you get a hat? No, I didn't, honey. Not that I care, but uh, did Richard call? No. Oh, well, who cares? Just as well. Oh, yes. Well, I, I don't care. Were you here all the time? Yes. Well, if he does call, tell him I'm not here. All right, Jane. Never mind, I'll tell him. Hello. Hello, Jane. Oh. Oh, it's you, Richard. Jane, I have good news for you. I'm taking you out tonight. I've got news for you. I've already got a date. Oh, you have? Yes, I have. Well, that's nice. Uh, enjoy yourself. I certainly will. Good night, Jane. 
Richard? Richard? Uh, Richard? Well, how do you like that? He's not even angry. Well, Jane, do you care? Of course I don't care. He means nothing to me. Nothing at all. Jane, you just tore your handkerchief. <laughs> well, I like it that way. After all, two handkerchiefs are better than one. <laughs> oh, leave me alone, will you? All men are dogs. Come in. Hiya, chicken. Hello, Prince, honey. <laughs> we were just talking about you. Oh, something good, I hope. Because, uh, Jane, I got something to ask you, and I, I don't know exactly how to begin. Well, leave out the words, may I borrow, and just take it from there. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, don't need money, Jane. It, it is my belief that a guy only gets places through contacts, people he meets. Yeah, that, that's partially true. Yeah. Now, when you first introduced me to Richard, I thought he could do me some good. But uh, through some slip in the conversation, he found out I was a bum. <laughs> now, Jane, you got a new guy, and I want him to think well of me. I mean... You mean in case he can do you some good. Well, contacts are vital, Jane. Now, wait, Al. I've just met Peter. It's our very first date. I haven't even been out with him yet. I know he has an important position with the government, but, but I can't ask him to waste his time helping out the unemployed. But, Jane, I'm not asking for myself. It's for Chicken. I want to marry her. But first, first I want to make a man out of myself. Oh, Al, don't change too much. <laughs> Hold it, Chicken. Look, Jane, your new guy is with the government, and they got lots of jobs open. There's, there's diplomatic work, there's reclamation projects. Well, I might get a job with the TVA. No, Al, I don't want you to fly. Chicken, TVA is a dam. I don't want you to swear, either. What do you say, Jane? I'd get down on my knees and beg you, but this suit won't take it. What do you say we all go to dinner together? Well, gee, Al, I'd like to help you make new contacts if I could, but I can't impose on a strange man and, and an important man on our very first date. I'm not asking for charity. The treat's on me. We'll pick up the check to impress this guy. Part of the scheme. Oh, Al, I just can't do it. Oh, Jane, it's for our children. <laughs> I can't even do it for your children, and believe me, I'm crazy about them. <laughs> Yes, this is Jane, Stacy. Oh, hello, Peter. Uh, how nice of you to call. Please, Jane. Try it. We'll pay all expenses. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 Peter, I, I hope you don't mind, but I have a rather unusual request to make. You see, I live with a girl, Irma Peterson, and her boyfriend is in town, and they would like us to be their guests at dinner. Uh, what's that? You accept? Now, now you're sure you don't mind? Oh, that's fine. We'll meet you here for cocktails. Yeah, same time. Wonderful. Goodbye. What do you know? He didn't object. He even seemed eager. Hey, you see? The rich like a handout, too. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous, Al. He probably has more money at his fingertips than the government itself. Now, remember, Al, you said you'd pay for this dinner. It's all on you, and I want to go to a very nice place. We'll handle everything. After all, I'm trying to make an impression, too. Must spend money to get money. Oh, Jane, you're really a wonderful friend. And believe me, Al and I will never forget this. And after we get married, we'll name our first baby after you. That is, if it's a girl. <laughs> if it's a boy, we'll name him Jim, but we'll spell it Jane. <laughs> well, now that I've committed myself to cocktails, I guess I better run out and get some hors d'oeuvres. Fine, Jane. And after cocktails, the entire evening is on me. It had better be. I'm loaded. Oh, Al, it's working out wonderfully. Where will we go for dinner? That's not important. What is important is where am I going to get the money to pay for it? <laughs> oh, but Al, didn't you get your unemployment check today? Yeah, but uh, made some bad business investments, chicken. Ran into the crummiest slot machines I have ever seen. <laughs> I have seen more lemons today than the whole state of California. <laughs> Al, Jane and her boyfriend are going uh, as your guest. What are you going to do? Chicken, when you're in a spot like this, there's only one man who can help you. Who, Al? Who else but... Hello, Joe. <laughs> Al, got a problem. Need 50 bucks immediately. What do you suggest? Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. Play bingo. But, Joe, how do you win 50 bucks playing bingo? 
or the way you play it at Surefire? Stand in a dark alley with a club? <laughs> Wait for a guy to walk past and bingo, you've got the money? <laughs> oh, no, Joe. No, must be legitimate. In that case, you cannot be of service to me. Gotcha. Goodbye, Joe. Chicken, you get ready. I'm going out to try to hustle the 50 bucks. But, Al, you got your unemployment check today. What are you doing back? Pete, I'm in a spot. Could I have an advance against the next two weeks? <laughs> Promise you I won't get a job. Ah, look, that's against regulations. It can't be done. But this might help you. I'm entertaining a big shot with the government. Might get you a good job. Please, Al, don't bother me. I've got my own troubles. I've got a date with a new girl tonight, and I've got to raise ten bucks to get my suit out of hock. <laughs> yeah. I was in a worse hole. But luckily, she's got a girlfriend whose chump boyfriend is picking up the dinner tab. Yeah, you're a fine pal. But I'll fix you... This year, I vote Republican, and next year, you'll be in this line right in back of me. Well, Al, I'm all dressed and ready to go out. Are we going to a ritzy restaurant? With my present resources, chicken, I hope Jane's boyfriend's a vegetarian. <laughs> Why? Looks like we're going to chew grass in the park. Jane will be embarrassed because this is her first date and, and he's such an important man and everything. Now, come in. It's only us again, Kropotkin and O'Reilly. Oh, hello. Uh, Mrs. O'Reilly and I would like for you to do us a favor tonight, please. We are going out and we wonder if you'll take any messages that come for us. Be glad to, Professor, but you've got to do me a favor, huh? It's a matter of life or death. Could you lend me 50? Sure. Can you break a dollar? <laughs> no, 50 bucks. Al, if I had 50 bucks, do you think I would be going around with a certain party so she won't throw me out because I can't pay the rent? Oh, Professor, you and your jokes. <laughs> Al, since you're Irma's... <laughs> Al, since you're Irma's boyfriend and I'm in such a good mood tonight, I'll lend you the $50. Gee, thanks. If I thought I'd get it back. <laughs> oh, I'll be good for it. Very well. Now, if you gentlemen turn your backs... I'll take it out of the vault. <laughs> now, don't peek, Professor. Send me stuck in. How do you like that? And to think I've been wasting time holding hands with her. <laughs> Here you are, Al. Come on, Mrs. O'Reilly. Now we can go dancing. Before, I was ashamed to take you. Before, it looked like you had three knees. <laughs> Goodbye and good luck. <laughs> Thanks again, Mrs. O'Reilly. Consider this only a temporary loan. Okay, Chica, now we're in business. And since we're going out with such an important man, you take this money and go down and buy yourself an orchid. Well, Al and Irma and myself are waiting for Peter Guilford to come over for cocktails. Irma's dressed for the occasion... She's wearing a sweater with her initials, an I and a P, embroidered on it. And knowing that Peter is a government man, Irma wants to show him she's impartial, so she's embroidered two more letters in front of her initials. D for Democrat and an R for Republican. Of course, the fact that it comes out drip doesn't seem to bother at all. <laughs> Honey? Yes, Jane? You know, I can't understand why Peter's late. Well, he better show up. I've already invested ten bucks for a chicken's orchid. He's got to be a very big man for me to get my money back. Now, don't worry, Al, and just don't embarrass me, please. Well, I guess I'll go in the kitchen and fix the hors d'oeuvres. Chicken, just got an idea. What, Al? When this Peter gets here, it won't be right for me to blow my own horn. So I think I'll go into the bathroom, and that'll give you a chance to tell him all about me. Well, Al, what shall I say? Well, uh, tell him I'm now retired, but will make myself available because I know the government wants men to take charge of various projects in all 48 states. The projects in all 48 states. Yes, I'll remember. Uh, oh, that must be him now. Let him in. I'll be in the bathroom. Come in, Mr. Guilford. Oh, good evening. You must be Jane's roommate. Yes, that's me. Uh, my initials are on my sweater. Uh, just the second half. Uh, won't you sit down so we, <laughs> so we can chat about my boyfriend? 
Uh, what about him? Uh, he's been engaged in various projects, and he's wanted in all 48 states. <laughs> What? Irma, honey, would you get the ice and the... Oh, hello, Peter. Oh, hello, Jane. Your, your roommate has been trying to tell me something, but I... I know. We'll, we'll have a drink. Irma's easier to take that oh. way. Uh, uh, Al? Al, come on out. I want you to meet someone. Come in. Al, this is... Al! Pete! <laughs> Holy mackerel. Jane, is this the big shot government man? Why, yes. Chicken, you know your orchid? Yes. Put it in the icebox. We're going to have to eat it all week. The other night I came home and found that Irma had made a little black jacket which she'd put on our bar of swan soap. So I said, Irma, honey, what's the idea of that? And Irma said... Well, Jane, if a penguin can wear a tuxedo, so can our swan. <laughs> well, that's Irma keeping her eye on her swan soap. And no wonder, because Irma knows that swan is the perfect soap for dishes. And you know, ladies, it is. Why, even the way a cake of swan feels tells you it's a perfect dishwashing soap. Sure, the next time you unwrap a cake of swan, just feel the cake with your fingertips. Feel how Swan Super Creamed Blend makes it differ from other soaps. It feels smoother. And feel those mild Swan suds. They feel richer, creamier. Then you'll know why Super Creamed Blend protects your hands. Yes, thanks to Swan Super Creamed Blend, your hands are left with a soft, smooth, young look. And here's an added note. Those Swan suds rinse away so completely your dishes don't need wiping. A real time saver. So for a soap that protects your hands, a soap that gets you out of the kitchen in a hurry, you want the soap with the exclusive super creamed blend, Swan Soap. Well, it's a small world, and I never knew it could be so revolting. Me, Jane Stacy, the girl with all the answers, had to fall for a guy who was only one step ahead of Al. <laughs> so I said, you know, Irma, I've learned my lesson. I'm going to stick with Richard. A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. That's what Al says. What do you mean, honey? He says, why should he go looking for another chicken when he has a perfectly good cuckoo? <laughs> And for once, Al has come through with a perfect description of my friend, Irma. My Friend Irma, presented by Swan, another fine product of Lieber Brothers Company, was produced and directed by Cy Howard. Tonight's script was written by Cy Howard and Park Levy. My Friend Irma stars Marie Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. The part of Professor Kropotkin was played by Hans Conried. Ladies, listen. The shortage of fats and oils is still very serious, and it's worldwide. So please keep on saving every drop of used kitchen fat. Your butcher will pay you for every pound. Frank Bingman speaking. Spry. Cakes are light and high. Spry. There's a reason why. Spry. Cakes improve with Spry. Rely on Spry. Yes, there's a reason why Spry makes grand cakes. Spry has an amazing cake improver secret. Try the Spry one bowl way and be sure of lighter, finer, richer cakes every time. No other type of shortening has Spry's cake improver. For new cake making success, try Spry, the pure all vegetable shortening. Rely on Spry. S P R Y. Rely on Spry. Tune in next week one hour earlier and listen to the Lux Radio Theater, immediately followed by my friend Irma. This is CBS, where 99 million people gather every week. The Columbia Broadcasting System. Yeah.